And good evening, my lovely Lost Tales, and welcome back to the Blue Rose Respite for my soothing Sunday night stream. I hope you're all doing well this weekend. I hope you're all steadily recovering after experience my latest ASMR tale. Thank you all so much for showing that uh, particular video so much love. Um, it was a wonderful way to come back uh, after my holiday break. And as the first video of 2023, I think we headed off on a good note. <laughs> But a big thank you first and foremost to Cytaral's ex-boyfriend for your renewed subscription for four months now. Thank you so, so much. You're amazing. And a huge thank you to the wonderful as always Scarlet Novella for your 35 month resub coming up to almost a full three years now of putting up with my bullshit. Thank you for being a wonderful friend. Thank you so much, Scarlet. She does an amazing job of making sure you guys stay in line <laughs> and make sure everyone's having a good time. So please uh, share her some love as well. All right, you guys. Oh, and Spirit Wolf. Spirit Wolf, thank you so much for the subscription. I really, really appreciate it. You're amazing. Thank you. But guys, we are getting stuck into Vegan Pines again. Um, I thought last week was going to be getting to the end of this game, but we're going to be finishing it tonight. I think we are right on the cusp of finishing it, um, but I want to try and get as much information out of the mystery of this game as possible. So I know I said this last week and we ended up streaming for like four and a half, almost five hours, I think. Um, but uh, what we'll do is we'll just get, play until we reach the end of the story and we reach to the end of the satisfying story. So who knows, we might end, have wrapped this stream up after like 45 minutes, an hour and a half, two and a half hours. Who knows? We're just going to get to the end of the story tonight and we'll see how long the journey is. I'm starting to think this game does not have an end. You know what? That wouldn't surprise me if this is just the song that goes on and 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 on. Mm. Also, I am drinking some very delicious uh, lemon and ginger tea with some honey. I'm not sick or anything. I just, I wanted something sweet to end the evening on, but I didn't want anything like dessert. So uh, tea with lemon and honey is really nice. Good, good, good. Alrighty. Let's go, guys. Chapter 6. So, I can't even begin to summarize all the stuff that happened in the last stream. Honestly, if you want a full summation of what happened in the previous time I played this, watch the VOD. It's on my second channel. Um, and then you'll be able to catch up because there was so much shit that was dropped in uh, the previous, previous session. So, settle in. Pour yourself a drink, and I hope you all enjoy. And guys, we're also just on the cusp of a hype train, so if you want to renew your subscriptions, now is the perfect time to do so. The heist. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology. Not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. Yeah, fuck those clipboard By the time guys. The sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door. All were in agreement. This could just work. The Lou Bear! Thank you so much for the 200 bits! Iggy being a boss was my favorite part. Honestly, that was one of the highlights of the last time I played this. But thank you so, so much for the bits! And guys, we are on a hype train at the moment, so now is the perfect time if you uh, want to think about donating to me, sending some bits my way, or getting a subscription. Now is the perfect time to do it. Thank you so much, guys. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. Hmm. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Oh, thanks for the hydrate check. Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. Hmm. Alright, quick recap. 
Rollo, you're gonna talk to Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fritz, this whole thing could go bust. Me? Cordial is my middle name. Uh huh. And how do you plan to explain your new. He waved vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Bah, she'll be so happy on my life, she won't even notice. Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. And Beck, you're sure Alona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nelly is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Hmm. Well, Godspeed. Unless the help of Jeff. And that's the help of Iggy and Tish. Who's Jeff again? Okay, I'm just gonna zigzag around until I eventually find them. I'm sure they'll be prominent on the street somewhere. What do you have to say, though? Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow. I admire the conviction. But can he really fall through? Oh, there's Jeff. That's right. Hey, Jeff. What can I do you for? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. I've been good, Kalana. How have you been? I hope you've had a good weekend. Hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry. I mean... I didn't say it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So, we're gonna break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. <laughs> you see, I knew your kids were all right. Great, so you'll help? The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. But... Give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and abetting you rascals. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Let the kids swear. Let the kids swear. Um I kind of just want to do them in order, so junk? Junk. Yeah, what of it? Sunny, I've got more junk than a king has copper. Ain't interested. Luca wasn't ready to give up so easily. Okay. He shouted out again. Uh Okay, let the kids swear. Shit. Yeah, it's all shit. I still ain't helping. Ain't that some shit. <laughs> Fight! Fight! I've done enough fighting for one lifetime, and more than my share of losing. Time's come to hang up the gloves. Hide! Jeff's brow perked up. What do you say? Go ahead and hide then. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff, and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I've got just the thing. 
And while we're at it, the crate should come in handy. This ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of bags of sour gobs should cover it. Put it on my tab. Luca offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Hell yeah. Done. Oh, Kalana! Oh, that's fantastic! I'm so happy for you! I can't believe begin to imagine how good that feels. I'm really, really happy for you. Swing by first thing in the morning. Run, 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 run. Hey, guys, can you help me? Fuck some shit up? Hey, Tish, look who it is. Luca, are you here to try to tickle us to death again? Look, just hear me out. Iggy raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've been giant bags of... Shit. Shit to each other. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kinda... Strange, you know? Iggy considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we... Break? Break our hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things. Oh, Kalan, I'm really, really happy for you. That's awesome. Even if a truce means less uh, breaking things. Uh, what if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. My, my, Luca Van Horn. I'm impressed. And after all this is done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. But not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. With a quick nod, Luca was off. Did you hear that, Tish? Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. A single tear ran down Tish's cheek. Oh! I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. They just wanted some friends! Chapter 7 Into the Hive A good heist requires preparation. Alright, I don't know if this particular branch is going to be, like, the end. Um, or, like, the last, like, branch of the tree sort of thing. Because it feels like there's way too many things out of place. Like, Rollo's stuck the way he is. And uh, things are kind of a bit messy all over the place. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but so Tarol's ex-boyfriend, thank you so much for the gifted sub to Kalana Steelwolf. That's fantastic. Thank you so, so much. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. Mm -hmm. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. Let's do this. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Honestly, that is so true. Don't do this because this is really shifty. But if you go almost up to any building, 
any building or even a concert. If you're going up to a concert ha carrying like big heavy boxes and you go up to security like, hey mate, can you get the door? And you just walk with confidence. Uh, like honestly, nine times out of 10, they'll just let you into the building because you're walking with purpose and confidence and like, you know, you have to be there. Or like walking into a corporate building, wearing a nice suit and a, a clipboard with a pen. You don't even have to be wearing like a security badge or anything. Just walk with purpose. A lot of the times they'll let you into the building. It's really weird. <laughs> but yes, for legal purposes, do not actually do that. I will not be, I refuse to be held responsible for that. I'm just saying that it is a phenomena. It is social engineering. Don't use it to your advantage. Don't do illegal things with that. <laughs> Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. Honestly, a big part of it is just like we're taught about people who do this because like I work in, I won't, I won't say like what type of like building or industry, but I work like inner city stuff with a lot of like tall sky rise buildings with a lot of security. And that's the kind of thing that we're told to keep an eye out for is like asking people about security badges and stuff like that, or like why they're in the building if you don't recognize them. Hmm. Just fun little things, you know. I'm just going to quickly check the tree. So many branches. Okay, I think we're currently on that one at the moment. I could be wrong. Oh my god. Is the disguise literally just a tool belt and a moustache? God damn it. Just stay calm, Rollo. You can do this. Oh, thank you so much, Sam! Like, pro oh, probably the only two patches that you guys can really notice with this angle is um, my ACDC one that I've got here, and I've got a ghost one on here. But I've got lots of other patches on my battle vest. Although, I do- I'm not sure if you guys can see it, hang on. I do have a bat right on my chest that says spooky, and I love it. Got your delivery here. Chaywood the God, welcome back! How's it going? Good to see you again! Uh, delivery? Hmm, I don't have anything in my notes about a delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery schedule for this morning. Right. He had to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that it be kept secret. Rollo sighed, adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this off one of the records. Oh, thanks so much, Samuel. I'm really uh, happy with how it came out today. Our harvest awaits and such. With a stroke of his mustache, Rollo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Our harvest awaits. Oh my god, we actually get to look inside now. Okay. The package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, this is a need to know kind of thing. Um, I'll just check. He's like. Stammered. And flip through the pages of his clipboard. You like this voice? This is my I'm wearing a fake mustache to disguise myself voice. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this form. Rolo interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late. Well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you say her name was again? I'm... Rollo panicked. Aha, Mr. Waits! Sir? That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir? No oh, Harvest Waits! Ready to light this candle, Tish. Yup. Suck on this, perennial ham fist. What was that? 
The distraction was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Let's open the damn door. I've got a job to do. The clipboard fumbled around in a frenzy. I... I should check on that noise. Oh, come on. Just buzz me in already. Okay, okay. <laughs> run, 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 run. Phew. That was close. Our harvest awaits. Mm -hmm. Hey, I figure... Mm -hmm. When in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you pulled it off. Nice work, Rolo. Right. Alright, everyone knows what to do? Yep, deep engineering is to the north. Mm -hmm. I'll go with Beck. Mm -hmm. In case she needs some muscle. I'll head to the east of the Founder's office. You two be safe. Locate okay, the Founder's office. That's odd. There's not even any cups for the water. Very weird. Oh no. Oh, way to nowhere. What's going on here? Is this some sort of mind game? This whole place is a maze, isn't it? Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't interact with it any further. That's the only thing that's making me like, mm, I'm not sure if there's a switch behind that poster. I don't know. Oh. Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca? What are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A veneer of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up and when they were distracted I ran. Dang, okay, you should stick with me. We've got a plan. No! Luca, sweetie, no! Don't tell him! Oh no! Solomon's facade briefly faltered. We? Oh no! Oh no, 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 no! Yeah, Rollo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't just leave yet. They'll catch us again. I gotta do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? <laughs> oh no! I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Baby, no! Honestly... I love the structure of this game because we found out, like, we're at the end of the game, so, and this was revealed, like, in my previous stream, but because in the previous pathway we got we got to the end and it was revealed that Solomon actually was the founder, but he was just, like, in kid form and then he becomes, like, he takes a potion and becomes, like, his adult self again, so this is making me tear my hair out, just like, Luca, no! Baby, no! Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said, Founder. It was just down this way. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. The office of the Founder. Knocking comes with consequence. 
I want that on my office door. I don't have an office, I'm in a, a studio apartment, but one day when I have a bigger place and I have like my own office for like recording and like streaming and stuff, I want that as a plaque on the door. That is so good. Oh, here it is. So it is. I'm, it's pretty lucky that I ran into you or else I might have missed it. Truly fortunate. Luca tried the handle. Locked. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we, could possibly defeat a lock like that. Luca smiled and looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. Hell yeah. I don't know what sort of funny business you're up to, but I like it. She mined a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. That plaque would also work as a doormat as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Howdy. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Rollo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck at the locked door marked 24601. My name is Jean Valjean! <laughs> yes! Two, four, six, oh, one. Need you to get us through. Yeah, Snake Sosa. 24601 is Jean Valjean's uh, prisoner number in Les Miserables. So. As a musical theatre nerd, and I love going to the theatre when I can, I've been to say, say Les Mis, I know all the memes about Les Mis, so I understood that reference. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Hmm. Luca pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. Solomon must be so fucking pissed right now. Oh, Baron. Hey, what's up? I'm eating ribs and can't use my keyboard, so I'm gonna chat telepathically. If you think about something funny, assume it was me. <laughs> oh my god, you're eating ribs? I love ribs so much. So good. Especially like barbecue ribs, Texas style. Mm. Mm -hmm. How. How did you just guess that? Oh, it's this absurd password Rollo heard when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Well, they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a <laughs> smile. Oh, I, I do kind of love this though. Your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Okay, I might give this kid one head pat before I punch him in the face. In Minecraft. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Rollo, I think this should do it. Bingo Bango, doors open, Luca. You never fail to impress. What is that slippery lout even doing down here? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to help. Uh, we're here to get her out. I see. 
Okay, Luca, I think we're close. The next door marks uh, 13806. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Solomon, you little shit. Crap, we've got company. Luca, must go faster. One sec, I can't think with all this noise. He quickly skimmed the screen with his finger. Here it is, 13806, go, go, go. Curse these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. No. Oh man, no water cups. Rollo! Run, children! Rollo, are you okay? Rollo, come in! Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You turn off the alarms. They're trapped. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolla, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, you two rabble rousers are coming with us. No. Yes! I love you, Roxy! Make a break for it! Did that little shit just kick me? <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's just a shame she didn't punch you in the mouth. Don't just stand there after them! Okay, I think that worked. Roxy and Fitz have them on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Volo, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say we've got time. Entering Nellie's office now. Mom! Oh, honey, what did you do to your hair? I thought you'd be happy. I finally used the young chemist's lab kit. You sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. We need to get you out of here. Me? Who is your adult friend? Oh, I'm not an adult. Adult? Ever heard of a growth spurt? I had more of a growth spew. No, that's not possible. Nelly leaned over to examine his teeth. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars, consistent with Tempest liquid exposure. Is that what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh, oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, uh, sweetie, I promised I didn't know. Mom, what the hell is going on in this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A normal chemical compound was discovered under vegan pines in a wellspring they called the Source. They named it Tempest Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It was the secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the Source, infusing small amounts of Tempest Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time. But it led to complications. The foul harvest. Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess, to succeed where Valentine failed. But Tempest Liquamine is rebellious. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by, by its very nature. So the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists, yes. I can relate to that. My role is to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott. Harnessing the Tempest Liquid Mine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. 
Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, right? Nellie sighed. You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? They contained obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I fixed them and... And now I get to replace my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Meh, those clothes were all hand-me-down anyways. It sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I considered that possibility. I sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Kerr had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. It's why we've got to get you out of here. I just... Like now. Wait, the vial! I finally solved the chemical equation, allow a direct control of aging! Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we got to hightail it. Luke, we've doc uh, got Dr. Modwell heading your way now. Roger that. Be careful. Alright, everything's on track. And what is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything. Uh, we'll go over everything when, we, when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard drink for a hard man. Wow, even his alcohol is arrogant. Solomon muttered inaudibly. I should just smother you right now. <laughs> I do love this game. I do love this game. And yeah, I love the picture on the wall that it is. Um uh, Valentine and the two kids. Just, the clues are all here. What's that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly, you're not bother at all. Let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security system. Time card logs. Payroll. Now for being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Solomon once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? Oh, nothing. Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. Dang, this must be good. The good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as you suspected. Looks like the founder was helping Kerr plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with a party? Only time will tell. Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. Still warm. He must have been in here recently. Anything else I'm missing? Okay, I think that's everything. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. We're gonna get you out of this, I promise. With a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. You little shit. There's even books in the chair to boost the seat. <laughs> You're absolutely right! And the fact that all the consoles are low like, if you notice, like, the, the console, it was high enough for, like, Luca to, like, push the buttons. Or Solomon to push the buttons and not, like, high, that only an adult could access them. And wait. That cabinet also looks like, the cabinet with the alcohol looks really, l like, low. Solomon! You might be a grown, uh, Doberman in a puppy's body, but you should not be drinking and smoking at your 
in your diminutive state. I'm just saying, that's probably not good for you. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it. Locked. That was close. When we left Nellie's office, it was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Yes. Rollo. Before we start tossing blame around, it is possible. Is it possible someone ordered a pizza? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not a pizza. What now? Don't look at me, I'm officially retiring from the heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. Let me just, just let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. No, Solomon! You're gonna let them in, you shit! Everyone else, huddle up. Oops. <laughs> you little bastard! I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no! Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. <laughs> Dr. Modwell, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child. The powerful and enigmatic founder. Sharper, the fallen proge uh, progenitor who created this town. Perennial Harvest, Valentine Fertilizer. All connected by a single thread. Yours truly. But that's... Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of Epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. Huh, yes, now you've got it. Tempest, look on mine. You discovered how to reverse the process. Solomon clapped with genuine delight. Little shit. Very good, Dr. Modwell. Very good. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. And the effects went a little too far for my tastes. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Which you did admirably. Mr. Kerr, the vial, please. Kerr presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. May I present to you the eighth wonder of the- Before you could finish, Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Sabrina, thank you so much for the follow! You are now one of my lovely lost tales, and you are welcome at the Blue Rose Respite any time. Thank you so much for joining us! Well, this, so this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool! You have no idea what you have in your hand. Actually, we do. You just did the whole evil villain monologue thingy about it. Rollo casually tossed the vial to Luca. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Luca jiggled the vial mockingly. Seize him! Luca! Over here! Move another inch and I smash it. She held it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed. Speaking in crisp, measured syllables. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine. Risk killing us all. Or, if you're lucky, nothing happens. Then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. But I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. We both know there's only one way this ends. She looked to Nelly shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nelly sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. 
Mm. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it. We can't trust that jerk. I'm sorry, he's right. With apprehension, Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Mr. Kerr, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Of course, sir. But first, you have a speech to make. Trot out there and give me the introduction I deserve. And don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think, all of this is thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? Huh. I said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be a part of something great. But the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my work. Solomon shook his head with gratification. Well, the universe has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me his true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. A muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. Well, that's my cue. After the festivities and my subsequent ascension, I will return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. You three, keep post outside the door. Well, crap. Oh no. Hey. I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know, it's just... We were so close. I've got a feeling that eventually Solomon will get Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. Well, time seems like less of an issue for him now. Nellie was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a minute to calm my mind. Can't believe Beck sold us out like that. She didn't. I'm, I'm sure she switched the vial with something else. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now? What's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Rollo. You just need some time. Rollo, it's over. We lost. Luca, there's something you should know. After Mr. Kerr locked me in that office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked about around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at perennial harvest was growing short. So he left behind a letter with the hope it would be found by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents. Luca, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did it say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with a stolen keycard. That was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amounts of tempus liquamine. Liquamine, sorry. The color dropped from Luca's face. Did she? Is she? She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted perennial harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Science is often at the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. Now believe, 
I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his work. And yes, um, it was one of the, like, uh, final things on a, a previous uh, branching path is the revelation that um, uh, the grandmother uh, that we've known the whole game through is actually uh, Luca's mother who was exposed to the um, chemical liquid trevermine tri which made her grow older so uh, he believed his mother was still missing and he was being cared for by his grandma but it was really his mom the whole time because she couldn't leave her boy. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable conclusion. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? A sudden explosion sounded from the hull. Chapter 8. Comeuppance. Ears still ringing, Gran picked herself up <gasps> off the ground. Okay. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. Oh! With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She's coming to rescue her boy! She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Yay! Gran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rollo. Hey, Mrs. Lucas Gran. That's awful nice of you, but I'm fine. Hi, Jay. How's it going? Welcome back. I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, no. What did they... Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We gotta stop him! In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. Oh, Jay, um, I don't think you've been to one of my streams for a while, but I try to make sure, like, unless I can see they're a first-time, uh, chatter, make sure to welcome back everyone who's able to join us. Oh, thank you for the stretch check. Oh, I saw my personal trainer on Saturday, and he is thorough, and my shoulders are very sore and stiff, so thank you, I needed that. No! Well, I guess that's it. We lost. I wouldn't be so sure about that. With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? Ooh, okay. Ooh, thank you for the hydrate check. Mm -mm. Alrighty. Mmm. Ooh, it was the old switcheroo. Uh, okay, I just want to, like, uh, pick the words, because we, ha we have plenty of time tonight, so I want to pick the words in, like, the order that they uh, appear, so... I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he, he drank his own cigar, Ash. Mm. How did Ashes get into the vial? It was pretty easy to mess with the vial when it was behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky. 
Well, it's a bad habit anyways. I always said bad habits are like 50 yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Oh, I wonder then if like you sp if you pick a different thing, she tweaked the potion with something else and then he looks different each time. Or Oh no! <laughs> you just got Thanos! <laughs> that puppy just got Thanos! <laughs> oh, I, I shouldn't be laughing this hard, but holy shit! And Rolla is just there staring like, well, that's one way to kick a habit. Bad habit. As the last of what was once sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines. A new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. Okay! The end. Okay. Well, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. <laughs> Next chapter, <laughs> Beacon Pines Endgame. <laughs> This fucking game is killing me. <laughs> hmm. Holy shit. This game is fucking great. You know what? No, I want to get all of the things. Okay. I just want to check if there's any other paths. Okay, yes, there was that one, Fire and Ice, which we had a slightly different uh, path that we could go down. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, we've got three different options for that. Um, but I want to pick the one that does it like, so it doesn't like completely end the story yet. Um, I think Change would maybe be the one that's like, leads towards like the final ending of the game I'm really choking laughing honestly like that just took me completely off guard of like holy shit oh my god because i also want to like see what happens with the other one if we pick the different path on that one uh and then we see what the different branching path is with um if we choose weep i don't know I'm going to pick Malice for this one, and then we'll jump to the other one, and then we'll go back to this one, because I think change is the correct one, because this game is all about change. So I think that's the correct one to get to, like, the end of the story, officially. Okay, I might have tweaked his Wonder Potion with a little Malice. I might have tweaked his Wonder Potion with a little Malice. Malice, the whiskey from his office? Yep, due to an unfinished glass on his desk. Because his core juice because you could use a little hair of the dog. <laughs> Animal puns! You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Oh no. Now that's what I call an 80 proof whiskey. <laughs> ha! Ha! Damn, dude. 
Fucking hell. The gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became wow. controlled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. That also felt pretty that good. That was unexpected. Mm hmm. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. Ooh. I love the narrator so much. <laughs> All right, so I want to see what happens with this other branching path if we choose weep uh, from these two options. I think that'll lead to another like end, dead end of the story. Um, and then we'll go back to the other one and we'll choose change, okay? Because this is the last time we're playing this and I want to see all of the different options. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. Oh no, now we're going to get sad. Brace yourself, guys. As they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This will make sense. All makes sense soon, Luca. And everything could go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. This is gonna kill everyone, though. She smiled. Miss Necro, how's it going? Welcome to the Mr. Blue Rose Respite. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to- Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Miss Necro. I hope you had a good weekend. Yep, knew it. Gran only had time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place. Oh. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets, sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Yeah, that's one of the worst endings. That was dire. Indeed it was, but I wanted to see all of the endings that we could get before we went to, like, the true ending. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Indeed we did. Now. We just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. No pressure. Alrighty. Alrighty. I think this is like the last bit of the story or the last choice before we lead into the end story. Ida tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny! Yeah, I plopped it in the vial when no one was looking. What's that gonna do? No idea. That's the beauty of science. Now, we observe. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist.
Holy crap, he's a baby! <laughs> yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he was no longer matters. Oh my god, look at this little dumbass! <laughs> you little shit! You've caused so many problems for so many people, but you are so cute! Oh, I want to pet him behind the ears. You little dumbass. You look so angry. <laughs> this is an innocent child. I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Eris awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Augustus, what do we... We do what Valentines always do. What must be done? I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for father, a uh, young sharper. That would be a great help, thank you. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone, the show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. Oh my god! Beacon Pine's coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Oh. Rollo, are you up yet? Roger that. It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? I'll be there in a minute. Oh. I don't want this game to end. I've had so much fun with it. In time, Eleanor began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. Eleanor had moved back into her bedroom. And now that she wasn't sneaking out late, she even slept there most nights. Oh. But well, the biggest mystery still remains. How does he get his sweater over his antlers? Personally, like, because this is the thing about character design, because you have to think of logistics, like if you have antlers or wings. Um, I think when you have antlers, a lot of the times with like some sweaters, you might have a zip at the back that goes to like the top of the shoulder blades and then allows you to open the neck, um, the head uh, part open a bit more so you can get it on more easily. Um, I, so I think he's probably got like a concealed zipper at the back of the sweater. Well, that's just me. Overthinking things. Let's do a quick check if there's anything I've missed. Oh, I want to be cozy by the fire one more time. While I sip my tea. I just want to see if uh, mom is somewhere around. There we are. Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on without me. I'll meet you there. I've got a batch of jam to finish jarring. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. And now, I enjoy it. Oh. Just want to have a quick look around just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Steph, had you kept going last week, it would have been a six hour stream. I think you definitely made the right choice to break it into two streams. I agree. I think last time I bit off a bit more than I could chew and I didn't realize just how much more to this game there was. I hear you and Rollo have big plans for that little tree house. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity one Rollo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand. But at least we've got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Ilona's shop doing? It's been great. I'm hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at State. Also, Nelly said she'd write a letter of recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rollo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. I don't just mean grown, literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this, because it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way. But he's just too dang proud to tell you. I know. Yeah, apparently Rollo's just stuck like that. I kind of in, like imagined that they would find a way to fix that, but no, apparently he's like all grown up. Hey Gus, how's the tree planning going? Couldn't be better. I'm so grateful to Ilona and Nelly for letting me help. It, I wasn't just wasn't built to be a mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Gus, we finished cleaning up the sidewalks. What's next? When perennial harvest collapsed, most of the clipboards skipped town. But some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Oh. Anyone with an act for art can help paint the new offices. You can count on us. Well, it looks like you really found your calling. I never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. Now this right here. This is something I can be proud of. Oh, good on you, mate. I bet your tail is wagging right now. I'm really happy for you. We'll go to the treehouse in a minute. I just want to look around town and see, like, just chat to everyone. How's the nap in this morning? The most underrated part of a good nap is the view. And the view is getting greener every day. Nice. I see you decided on a name. Yep, we had to clear out all the old stuff before putting on the final touch. Slow and Dirty Harvest is now official. I like it. It was actually Nelly's idea. There's still a lot of work to do and the name serves as a reminder. Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. In fact, I've learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. Our motto is, go slow and fix things. Amen to that. Oh, so they've turned it into like a nursery or a gardening center. That's really cute. I better not dilly-dally. Gotta get to the treehouse. Okay, so we can't look at the rest of town, but we just see enough to see what happens to perennial harvest. That makes me happy. Luca, get this. I managed to reel in an actual fish this morning. Seriously? Yeah, and honest to goodness, flip flopping, swim swamming, fish! I don't think I've ever caught an actual fish here. Been at least seven years since I've caught one. I'd say it's a good omen. What do you do with the fish? Oh, I released it back into the pond. I'm hoping to catch it again tomorrow. Okay, I just want to do the last little bit of fishing. Or is that everything? I thought surely we had like one or two Luca more things. A twig of thyme. Some fish have refined. 
Looks like we could use some new bait. What do you say we head out and find some more? Okay, I thought we'd like with one of the new words that we found we would have had enough. Hmm. That's okay. A little higher. Yep. A little lower. Yep. A little higher. Yep. I'm telling you, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Luca, there you are! Would you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of antenna re redesign. Fine, fine. Iggy, just don't do anything drastic until we get back. Who, me? Tish, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yep. They'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. If we really want mission control to turn into something bigger and better, we have to loosen our grip a bit. <sighs> You're right. Lead the way. Okay, we're heading over to Beck's house. Cool, cool, cool. Actually, I did see that there was something on the sign. Mission control. All the rice personnel only. Okay, just in case there was something new I wanted to check. Well, let's keep going through town. Say hi to everyone. Hi. Young Mr. Van Horn. How's little Solomon, uh, Sharper, doing? Young Sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I. So we do a lot of strolling these days. Has he, uh, you know... Attempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination? Yeah. Thankfully, no. I spoke at length the Dr. Module and she feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. Okay, that's a positive note. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmolded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Two activities I am endeavouring to find less distasteful. Well, I think you're doing a great job. And the whole town is ready to help out however we can. I can't wait to teach him to throw a baseball. Eris did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. Oh! Her heart's growing! Her heart grew three sizes that day. That would be... Acceptable. What's today's news that needs knowing? I'll give you tomorrow's headline today. Our old friend Patrick C. Montesquieu, aka William Kerr, just performed a stirring rendition of The Iceman Cometh at the State Correctional Facility. I hear there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Well, I guess he has plenty of time to work on his craft. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm glad you swung by. More follow-up questions for your story? No, nope. I got everything I need. Thanks again for that. I sent a draft of the story to a reporter in Capital City. And they offered me an internship. <gasps> I'm so happy for you, sweetie! Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. A story about a phony corporation that picked up an entire town of people and moved them to cover up a massive illegal mine shaft full of incredibly hazardous chemicals. Sort of writes itself, if you think about it. Just don't forget us when you become a fancy big city reporter. Capital City isn't that far away. I'm gonna have to check back from time to time to check in and see what sort of new trouble you've gotten yourself into. Sorry to disappoint, but my adventuring days are over. Ha, huh, we both know that's not true. What makes you say that? Call it a reporter's intuition. 
I can't I I can't make my voice that high for long periods of time, but I like to say very cute characters. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with a carefree smile. Is that your suitcase? That is two weeks of unencumbered tranquility. Excuse me? Would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sin, margaritas, and forgotten obligations. Excuse me? I'd love to place an order. Mrs. Fratelli sighed with a zen-like calm. She's going on vacation. She deserves it. As soon as the lunch rush ends, I'll be a feather on the wind. You're going on vacation? For the first time in years. And I got you and your mom to thank. Why is that? She didn't tell you yet? You two are gonna fill in for me at the diner while I'm gone. Just like old times. It's fine, I'll wait. Okay, she deserves it. Hell yes. He looked to his friends with a thankful smile. After everything could, that could have gone wrong, everything that did go wrong, we made it. The end. Closing her eyes, Miss Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath. Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? Uh, I think you're pretty much up to speed. Luca, do you want a biscotti? On the house. I don't really have time. Zario, you gotta come see this. I finally did it. I pulled the perfect espresso. Aw, oh, look me. If I didn't know better, I would think you're proud of something. As if. I... No. It's too late. You are now officially a person that cares. Yo, who's the flannel cat? I, I don't know. I'm sure there's a wiki with all the characters. I can't remember like all like all the characters' names off the top of my head. I like their fridge though, and their flannel. Honestly, I dress a lot like that when I'm out and about, so I appreciate that. But honestly, all the character designs in this game are so cool. Wow, back for seconds? If it's not too much trouble. For the longest time, I didn't understand the appeal of ice cream. It serves no purpose, other than to briefly be, be briefly enjoyed and then it's gone. But it's pretty tasty while it lasts. I'm inclined to agree. Hey Luca, can you tell Roxy I'll be free in an hour? Sure thing. My dad's making me stock the shelves for the summer. He said it builds character. I think he meant to say it builds calluses. Builds character. Yeah, it builds something, all right. Yes! We got mom one more word. I just want to see if that could be used for fishing! No, I did not look that up or anything like that. I was just like... Fuck it, that's the last time I'm going to be playing this game. I just want to check everything! Can I use it? Is it a thing? Please. Yes! One more! Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. One more time of the fishing game. <gasps> Should we give it a mom? She likes jewelry. That's a sweet thought, Buckaroo. But I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pawn bracelet. Yee. 
Alright, I'm satisfied. Let's go. Oh, quick stop at the library. Over the school year, Kato and Bert had become close friends. Oh, But did you know that? When they covered up the source, they found a new species of fungus. Yep, and they are studying it in the new labs. Did you know that? Vegan Pines is now the smallest town in the country? Yep, close to the population, uh, close to the population before perennial harvest moved in. It typically went on like this for quite some time. I can't believe it's over. Yeah, the town's really starting to turn a new leaf. The town? I was talking about Hank Atomic. I just finished the last issue. How was it? As great as always. Hank finally returned to Earth, but I just feel weird now. Weird can be cool. It just means you're ready for something new. Any suggestions? You can ask Miss Hatch about what she's always reading. She seems to really enjoy it. Huh. Maybe I'll do that. I know the mo the mention of fungus because I was playing The Last of Us earlier today. I'm just like sweating, just like, guys, don't eat the bread. Don't eat any of the bread or cake or cookies, anything with flour in it. Just don't. Just don't. Luca peeked over Piper's shoulder, laid stealthily inside a large volume of mathematics, was the first issue of Hank Atomic. Oh, Piper, are you reading Hank Atomic? Um, do you mind not telling anyone? I kind of got a reputation to uphold. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Just about every kid in town reads Hank Atomic. Honestly, I'm excited for you. What I'd give to start over fresh. To experience it again for the first time. I guess that's the downside of finishing something nice. At least now I can enjoy it again through you. Promise to tell me about it as you go? Sure thing. Oh. Hey, uh, Mr. Nuncreed. I'm gonna go see my dad in a bit. Did you want to come with? Even after everything I did, you'd still... Mr. Nuncreed shook his head. Uh, no, I have not been wa uh, watching the show, Sam. I've been uh, playing the game because I I haven't actually fully completed the game before. And uh, now that I had some spare time uh, or like taking some time on the weekends, I've been like sitting down and properly playing it. Um, without going into details in case there's people in chat that haven't played it yet or are unfamiliar familiar with it, I'm almost at the end of winter. I am very stressed out. <laughs> you really are your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Well, you're always invited. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt in my own time. You run along now. Harvest gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. Oh, another using it. Ah, that's great. That's great. Come one, come all. No one is too big, no one is too small. For Jeff's wild ride. Well, maybe not completely unused. Just one piece of candy for the ride of your life. Who's next? Me. That's right, take money from children in Minecraft. Guess what? Yesterday I saw a uh, Dionysus Titius. And that's good? It's great! I haven't spotted one of those in years. At this rate, Beacon Pines is going to become the bunk capital of the county. I just want to see if there's anything new around here. Anything that's changed. Luke 
Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Hmm, that's strange. Hey, uh. I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning, I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in. It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. It sounds like an awful lot like putting down roots. Well, I guess I decided this plate is root worthy. You're going to be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. Oh, what is it? My mom's prepared this tree especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. It should do okay in the cold of old beacon pines. And thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. Oh! It's to bring it to his dad. Why do all the nice chill games that I pick always hit us so hard in the feels? Okay. God, this game. Okay, guys. Let's head over. We've spoken to everyone in town. I can't think of anywhere else we haven't been. So... Because chill games focus more on feels than action. You know what, you're absolutely right. And a lot of chill games are more like about... Like, taking the time, slowing things down and like listening to the heart. And getting in touch with the feels. Okay. I'm ready to head towards the end. And go say hi to dad. Ah, you got it. Now that's a good looking tree. In a special occasion and whatnot. This rides on the house. You're gonna wanna go ah, you're gonna wanna hang on tight to that little tree. Just choking up, goddamn! <laughs> Honestly, I began to lose hope of ever finding it. Mm. But then you came along. We all did, guys. We all did. I, I don't know exactly how to thank you. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. Because we storytellers. Put our hearts and souls into stories. It's funny, now that our time together is finally ending, I'm at a loss for words. Mm -hmm. Let's just watch the end together. Okay. You guys ready? I'm ready. Done. A good little tree. The best little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah. Thanks. For everything. Shucks. I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. We probably should give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. 
Pa always said the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello. Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know. You don't even have to say it. You do make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We're a trio now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I... Thanks. There's just one thing missing now that you're part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Okay. Oh god. I won't be long. I'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start our summer. You've got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about Dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? No. Because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree. But I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modewell says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. So you won't have to be so cold for much longer. I... I think I finally understand why you left that night. Also, welcome, Bee Ghosty. Thank you for the follow. There are things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you, you. If you wouldn't have stood up to Sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. to go. And that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. And I think that's it. Oh, my heart is very full right now. Just gonna double check. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, this game. This. This game, <laughs> honestly, it's so much more than I thought it would be. Kirsten Mise, the storyteller, she was so good in this. Um, Kirsten Mise, I'm I'm gonna find her and I'm gonna like follow her if she's got a Twitter, cause holy crap, she's good. Um, but guys, um, 
Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hang on, I'm just going to... Just before I forget, I just wanted to take a quick photo of um, her credit as the storyteller so I can find her and follow her. But, guys... <laughs> Like, this game, not only was it, like, longer, it had so much more in it than I was expecting it to, but there was so much heart put into this. Like, the art, the story, even the design of, like, you jumping from path to path and you, like, get little bits of information and more questions, but then you get half of the answers, but then you, like, now know some things, but these... But this version of the characters doesn't know those things yet. This was so well executed. And it was a Kickstarter! I didn't know that it was originally like a Kickstarter project. This is so, so genuinely good. Oh my god. <laughs> um, honestly, I need to see what else this developer is working on because holy shit was this amazing. I know I've I've been lucky enough to play so many great games on my, um, on my channel on Twitch, but I don't know what it is about this one, like, it just was so well executed. It was a relatively simple premise, like, again, I was going into it not, like, and I'm not saying this in a mean way, but not expecting as much depth and, and as much amazingness as it delivered. And holy shit did it deliver. For everyone who's watching who watched it from, like, the first time I streamed it up until this one, because I thought it was only going to be, like, two streams long and it ended up being three. Um, but holy shit. <laughs> Last week, week was the first time I really had time to sit on a stream and I'm glad I had time to finish the uh, trip tonight. This is so much fun. What a visually stunning game and such captivating gameplay. Honestly, it was so good and I absolutely agree. Um... <laughs> And yes, I do have uh, my previous streams, uh, parts one and two, on a playlist uh, over on my second channel. So this is also going to be uploaded on there as well, so you can watch like the full story of, of my playthrough of it in order. I'm sure there's some things I missed, maybe some things I didn't quite discover yet. Um, but honestly, even though like you saw me discover all the different parts, wait a little bit and then pick up this game for yourself. Because honestly, small developers like this put so much heart and soul into these games and they absolutely deserve your money and your support so do give some love to the amazing voice actress of the storyteller um give her a follow on uh, twitter as well if you want to or on her socials and also check out the developer as well because i'm very excited to see what else they've got in the works like i think Beacon Pines came out like relatively late last year so they're not going to have anything new i think released for a little while yet Sorry, uh, Serena, I do like to, like, ramble a little bit at the end of the stream. <laughs> mm. Mm. But thank you for the hydrate check, Sabrina. Mm. And good time for a stretch check. Oh, thank you. Apparently there's a new minigame slash memory for Beacon Pines. Okay. Um, but then this is how the story begins. So... I'm going to leave it at that for now. Yes, mimes. Um, it's uh, it comes up in my socials at the end of the stream. Which, speaking of which, we're going to be going into now. I'm just going to finish up my last thoughts here because sometimes the outro music can be a bit loud. Um, honestly, this game was absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad I uh pick I picked it and streamed it. Uh, because when I saw like. Uh, honestly, I was going off of just the art and the premise, and I was like, okay, I have to stream this, or I have to play this and stream this and show you guys. Um, but I knew almost next to nothing about, like, the gameplay mechanic or the plot or anything like that. I was purely going off of the visuals and the fact that it was kind of, like, kind of cozy storybook with a little bit of spookiness at the same time. And I'm so, so glad I picked it and that I got to experience it with you guys, because... Holy shit, some of the moments in this game were absolutely fucking hilarious. And yeah, I, I love this game so much. I genuinely hope that you guys enjoyed watching me play it as well. But I think with that, 
we're going to be wrapping things up for tonight. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. If you've been lurking in the shadows and you like what you've seen so far, please consider following. We would love to have you back at the Blue Rose Respite. You are welcome anytime. Be sure to check out my other socials in the chat right now, including my Twitter for important updates and other fun things. Uh, my two YouTube channels, one for my ASMR tales. I have a new one that came out yesterday that a lot of people seem to enjoy, featuring, featuring my sinister Yandere superhero character, Night Angel. And my second channel for my Twitch VODs, um, I post my, excuse me, um, my Friday streams on, uh, mon on Mondays on that second channel, and I will be posting this uh, VOD on Thursdays. So typically it's like Monday, Thursday is my Friday and Sunday streams respectively. And uh, my Instagram for lovely pictures and all that other good stuff. <laughs> Uh, but thank you all so much for joining me tonight. A big thank you to everyone else who um, followed me tonight. We had quite a few newcomers this evening, so I genuinely hope you all had a good time with us. Um, I, uh, My wonderful, uh, lovely Lost Tales over on my Discord have voted for the next game I'm going to be playing on my Soothing Sunday stream, but I'm going to be announcing that um, probably at the start of this uh, coming week. So looking forward to that and I will see you guys on Friday for more control and I hope all of you have a fantastic week ahead and let's just actually have a quick look to see if there's anyone currently streaming at the moment we can go say hi let's go you know what we haven't said hi to the wonderful Brian and Amelia in a while so let's go send uh give a raid over at deck up games please give them a ton of love from the blue rose respite tell them i said hi and all that good stuff and we'll wrap things up for tonight and do remember take care of yourselves take care of each other and as always stay wicked and wonderful good night guys <laughs>